Go ahead. Todd, just, just uh, the offense obviously has, when you look at what you had against Cincinnati, you don't need to change a whole lot. Mm -hmm. What's this, this two weeks been like for you, just in terms of tweaking things and, and improving on what you had the last time out? We always kind of do a self-scout cross-check at this time. Uh, part of it's been getting some players healthy. We had some guys nicked up, obviously. Uh, that, especially up front, they played a lot of snaps. Those guys have been playing pretty well for us and trying to get some of those uh, guys that have 500 plus snaps healthy. Uh, looking at some of the weaknesses we may have, you know, spending some time uh, at some of your weaknesses. And then on film study, we put a lot of time into Rutgers, obviously, as a staff, just because they're probably the most complex defense we play, one of the most complex defenses we'll play in our conference year in, year out. And just getting a bead for where they're at and what they're doing and how they're playing. And so th those are the three areas we probably concentrate the most on. Talk a little bit just about how you, the freshman receivers mm -hmm. have stepped up and you're going to have to rely on them a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, obviously with the injury. You know, Deontay Welch has played a minor role pretty much in every game, so he's had, had some reps. Uh, going into that game, we told him he was going to play a lot at Z. We moved him over to the Z because of some nick nagging things at uh, that position. We had some nicks. Uh, it was good to see him play like we thought he had a chance to play. He has very good running skills after the catch, obviously. Mm -hmm. as a, he played quarterback, running back in high school. Andre, I think the thing with Andre is he's learned to practice on a day-in, day-out basis. Just the maturity level of coming to work and making yourself a better player. The last two weeks, he's done a much better job of that. Uh, we know he has talent, but it's a lot more physical and a lot more speed out there and I think it's he's starting to understand that how hard it is just to get open you know and, and now that's become a little bit more of an emphasis for him on a day-to-day -day basis so as you mentioned those guys are going to be critical to our success in the second half in the passing game and uh, they need to come every day and just continue to prepare like they've been the last two weeks. Do you change anything with with that inexperience in there or you just keep going? And well you keep on going you know you try to what we're trying to do is give them a, uh, the best situations we can put them in an advantageous positions uh, maybe by moving them around a little bit more things like that to, if we're having trouble getting off the line of scrimmage uh, with their youth but uh, we'll continue to run what we do and, and, and see how it unfolds but you have to have a little bit more of a backup plan maybe but we thought along all along that some of these young kids would be developed into some of our better receivers as the seasons unfolded mm -hmm. and now this just puts a little bit more of a highlight on it obviously with the injuries. Ty Rutgers defense has been pretty good at forcing turnovers and it's an area you guys want to get better at sure. uh, from especially over the last two games. What, what are you seeing from them on film that makes them so effective in enforcing teams into mistakes? Well, they lead the league in interceptions. I think they have 15 on the year I believe or something like that. Uh, what they do a great job of is you know, you always talk about the pressure package. It's not so many numbers they bring, but they do a good job of disrupting your quarterback's vision, making him feel uneasy, and then, you know, he gets a little bit cloudy in the reads, and, and they put the ball up. And they always, you know, they don't play a lot of cover zero where there's no safety help. He keeps safeties back in the back end, and when the ball gets a little bit errant, they have a guy behind that makes, because their safeties have all the interceptions. They have seven of the 15, basically. Uh, so those guys are on the back end roving back there. So it's all about the timing of the throw and keeping your quarterback where he can get his feet underneath him and throw with good balance and like i said how many sacks do they have they have sacks but he does a better job of disrupting the rhythm and making everything a little bit off time i want to ask about the tight ends and i mean obviously landy's making the transition i'm just asking about the production you've gotten from the position and, and what you're looking for there been, been pleased with the day-to-day -day play or week-to-week -week play of the tight ends they've done what we've asked them to do in their role this past week against Cincinnati or two weeks ago now, we had a little bit more of a red zone throw game to them. We had a couple isolation plays for those guys, and they did a nice job uh, with a couple of those things. Uh, they both have good ball skills, and obviously Evan being a former receiver. Uh, but overall, their play's been very, very consistent. Uh, and the things that go unnoticed, the, you know, the little running game things we ask them to do. When we ask Evan to do a lot of things on perimeter blocking and some of the things we do, and uh, he's done a really nice job of that. So. I think as the season goes on, we'll continue to try to find ways to get them the ball with either through play action passing or even on some isolation routes, you know, uh, against safeties and linebackers if we can, especially with some of the young receivers. You have to take some pressure off those young receivers outside.